Hello, welcome to AP Physics 1, Unit 5 or 4, but it's the unit of momentum. We'll be going over the concepts of momentum and impulse, and going over some practice problems at the end. So what is momentum? Momentum in a formula sense equals mass times velocity, and it's sort of the quantity of motion a certain object has. This minecart that's traveling at 2 meters per second and has a mass of 20 kilograms has momentum of 40 kilogram meters per second, or newton second. That's the unit for momentum. And momentum is signaled by P. Now the most common use for momentum is collisions. It's the one that's going to show up the most on tests. When two objects collide with each other, if there are no outside forces like friction, the conservation of momentum applies, the law of conservation of momentum which means that the amount of momentum before and after the collision, collision remains the same. Now, there are three types of collisions. Perfectly elastic, when the kinetic energy before and after are the same. Now, this is kind of tough to show in Minecraft, but think two pool balls that hit each other. They barely lose any kinetic energy after they collide. Now, an inelastic collision is when kinetic energy is not conserved, such as when I push this villager, some kinetic energy is lost and we don't share the same kinetic energy afterward. This is what you'll see most of the time in the real world. Now perfectly inelastic collision is when objects completely stick together. Such as if I were to shoot this villager, the arrow becomes embedded into the villager and now they both move at the same speed. Now don't get a change in kinetic energy before and after confused with momentum. In all of these collisions, momentum is conserved and it is one of the main reasons why momentum is used because energy isn't really applied here anymore because it's not balanced while momentum is. Now for the collision formula, it's m1v1i plus m2v2i equals m1v1f plus m2v2f. Now that was a lot, that was a ton of words, but it really just boils down to mv plus mv equals mv plus mv. And that honestly just equals the initial initial momentum, so PI equals final momentum, or PF. Now the dangerous part about velocity in these momentum equations is that since velocity is a vector, the direction also matters. So let's say you have an object that's going one way at 3 meters per second, and then it gets hit and comes the other way at 1 meter per second. That does not make it... 1 meters per second. It makes it negative 1 meters per second because it's going the opposite direction. So that is definitely something to keep note of. So we'll go over a few practice problems going over these concepts. If it's confusing right now, these practice problems make it a lot more clearer. Honestly, just saying these formulas are not is not the best way of doing it. But for now, let's move on to the last topic on momentum, which is impulse. Now, impulse has a few definitions, but the most useful ones are that impulse is a change in momentum, or delta p. If the impulse is being calculated on the same, same object, it can also be called mass times delta velocity, or m triangle v. Another way is a force times delta time, or f triangle t. And impulse is signified by the letter j. So why would we use impulse? Well. Impulse is a measure of force over a short period of time. So if I were to push this villager, that short time that me and this villager are in contact times the force that I exert on the villager in that short time is the impulse. So, so if you watch the last video about work, you'll know that work is the area under the graph for a force versus distance graph. Well, Im impulse is actually very similar in the sense that it is the area under a force t versus time graph. Now this is also the reason why impulse is force times delta time, if the force is constant. Remember from the last video, force times distance was the work formula if force was constant. That's because since it's a flat line, it becomes the area under the graph becomes a rectangle and you can just do a simple multiplication. But if it's not constant, then the true formula is j equals integral of f dt. So on a force versus time graph, the area under the graph will be the impulse. 
in word problems without the graph, however, they usually tell you either by giving you a force equation involving time, in which case you can take the integral, or just saying force is constant throughout. However, with graph problems, it is the area under the graph. So here we have a collision question where this minecart that weighs 10 kilograms runs into this minecart weighing 20 kilograms going at 3 meters per second squared this way. And this 20 kilogram minecart has no motion. And now after it hits, this 10 kilogram minecart then goes this way at 1 meters per second after the collision. So the question is, after the collision, how much speed is this 20 kilogram minecart going this way? Well. Well, if we know the momentum formula, which is m1v1i plus m2v2i equals m1v1f plus m2v2f. Now, this is, you don't have to write all of this out. By no means, this is not necessary. But just to make it a little clear, if we assume that this minecart is m2 and this minecart is m1, we can see that this we know this value this we know this value and since v2 is zero at this point we can cross that out and this we know this value and we are trying to find what v2f is now plugging in the values we get we get 10 times 3 equals uh 10 times and then the question said one one meters per second this way now you have to be careful because this is in the opposite direction so it would be a negative so negative 1 plus 20 times v to f this is our equation and since we know all these values we can solve it 30 my equals negative 10 plus 20 v to f and so this becomes 40 and then you divide it by 20 which equals 2 I don't know why it took me so long so V2F equals 2 meters per second and it's going 2 meters per second this way now for this next question we'll be dealing with perfectly inelastic collisions so the last question was a perfectly elastic collision but now this is a perfectly inelastic one so let's see how this will fare so let's say that I shoot an arrow going straight in the x direction at 10 meters per second. The arrow weighs uh, 10 grams, so 0 0.01 kilograms. This villager minecart system weighs uh, 30 kilograms. And the question is basically, once I shoot this villager, how far, uh, how much speed will this villager and this minecart have once I shoot him? Now the reason it's a perfectly inelastic collision is because once the arrow hits the villager it will be embedded into it. And so that means they'll have the same speed. So there's actually a special formula you can use for this. So the usual m1, v1, whatever, whatever. For now I'm going to be leaving out the m1, m2 because we know that m2, v2i is 0. So I'm just going to be putting in m1, v1i equals the villagers, the the ending system now will be a very special type because it's a perfectly inelastic collision. Since they have the same speed, we can factor out V. And so it'll be just VF. And then the two masses added together. So, what are the masses? Well, M1 is this, 0 0.01, so we'll plug that one in, times V1I, which is 10, equals. 30 plus 0 0.01, so 30.01 VF. Now our answer, once we divide 30.01, will be 0 0.003 meters per second. Now it might be a bit confusing because why is this velocity so low? But it does make sense because the arrow is so light and the villager system is quite heavy in comparison. So, since the masses are so different, the momentum doesn't really, it's very, it gets very unaffected by this very light arrow. Now we have an impulse question, but also energy kind of ties into this one, so it would be interesting. 
So the question is, there's a slime block down here and I'm up here. Say that my height at this point is 15 meters in the air and I fall all the way down to the slime block and then I bounce back up to a height of 10 meters instead. What was the impulse? The impulse of this bounce. So we know that impulse equals change in momentum. And momentum, change in momentum is mv minus mv. But this is the final and this is the initial. So that is j. So what we need to find is these two velocity values. And how we find that is through energy. So we have, we have this first, us going down first. Let's see how far the velocity is here. So assuming that I start from rest, so the equation we set up would be mgh, and since velocity is zero at the start, just assume that there's no velocity. Now we should just solve for v, 2gh square root equals v. And then we just plug in the numbers, so square root of 2 times 10 times 15 equals v. So, multiply them all together, so it's 300, and that is our initial velocity, right? So when we get to this slime block, our velocity right at that instant is square root of 300 meters per second. Now when we come back up, it says that we come back up to a height of 10 meters. So we need to find the velocity at that point, and it's just going to be the exact same process mv squared and then we just do square root 2 gh again because we need to solve for velocity so through velocity we get 2 times 10 times 10 this time and so our velocity equals square root of 200 now to simplify these radicals it would be 10 times root 2 and this would be 10 times root 3 And this is the final velocity. So now we have the initial and final velocities. So if we take into account the negatives, we get delta p equals m1. I mean, let's just plug in the values right now. So m m would just be 40 both times. And since m is the same, we can factor out m. And so it would be vi, which is 10 root 3 plus, or in this case, double negatives that turn into a plus. 10 root 2 and then that equals 1258.5 newton seconds which is the which is the unit for impulse and so that's the question